While people search high and low for nostalgic parts, I had a lot of requests lately. But when I refer to uh, LT1, it's not the 6.2 liter LT1. It's a 370 horse solid lift 1970 Camaro Z28 LT1. And in my travels, I came across uh, this part number 1408. 7508 um, that isn't this part number because these are from Speedway but that is the original part number when you're uh, you know got a numbers correct car <clears throat> and, and most of these guys do so um, uh, it, it specifically states for it's 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 for 1968 and newer but that right there is um, not exactly factual. Way back when baby boomers were young, way before my time, they only had the 283 and the 327. There were seven variations of the 327 through you know 62 to 65. The 302 entered the scene in 67 because SCCA had a five liter limit on VH, couldn't race them. Uh, you know, you couldn't, if you were over five liters, you couldn't race them. So the 307 came in 68, and in 1969 was the last year for 327. But what I want to discuss is 68, because that was a split year for small journal and large journal crankshafts, much like 74 was a split year for points and HEI. After that, 69 and forward you know everything was large journal so when this part number says that it's 68 and newer there could still be a 68 302 out there with small journals in which case the windage tray stud part number changes to 3872718 pre-68 is how it is stated in print and would be the appropriate part number even though the car is a 68 and, um, you know, you'll have to check to, uh, Chevrolet to see if the part number has been discontinued. As with any part number you get from here. But um, I, I've got a good way to do that. Uh, log on to gmpartsgiant.com. That's gmpartsgiant.com. And type your part number in. It might ask for a vehicle. Just type that in. And uh, the way GM works is if it's in the part list, it's good. If it's not, it's probably discontinued or refers to a number change. But that listing you're on says discontinued, can't be ordered, so you'll know. And also, you have to remember that uh, you can probably still get some of this stuff at the automotive swap meets across the country. Some of them are great. But you, um, you have to know what you're looking for. And uh, do these guys that have number correct, period, correct cars do some searching? Wow. Okay, in the next panel, you'll see different materials they use for crankshafts. There's two crankshafts made out of two different materials. One on the left here is forged steel. It has a mark right here, a forging mark, and they grind it. So it has a grinding mark there. That's uh, that's a Chevrolet crank, 1182 casting. This is um, a nodular iron cast crankshaft, and what they have here is a parting line, which tells you it's cast. So if you're buying one and the guy's telling you something and you're seeing something different, this is how you differentiate between which is forged and which is cast iron. These heads are casting number 3927186. In the next panel, we'll show you the casting number. The last three numbers of the casting number 
186 appear right here on the cylinder head is another identifying factor. The one on top has a production date of J89 and that should be October 8, 69. The one on the bottom is I209 which is should be September 20th, 69. These are often referred to as double hump or camelback or camel hump heads. The next two panels will, sh will show that. Based on their production dates, they would have been on the showroom floor in the late fall of 69 for the 1970 year model. That's my guess because the new model year comes out in the fall of the previous year. These are high performance Z28 LT1 and if you add solid lift, they were rated at 370 horse. They have 202 160 valves and 64 cc chambers and if you're trying to identify these as period correct uh, you're, you're gonna need uh, some sort of reference now some more about crankshafts the crankshaft on the left is a Chevrolet forged crank the one on the right is a cast iron crank and the one in the middle is a forged scat crank the, the scat crank is, is fillet radius. The following panel shows you the radius of the scat crank. It's a shiny surface here. The Chevrolet Forge crank on the left has less of a radius shown in this panel. Let's take a deeper look into this to show more perspective. Here we have a crankshaft and these are the two throws. The stock one on the left and the fillet, fillet radius one on the right. This one has a radius machined right here and right here. This adds strength because it is right here where stress can cause cracks. The panel that follows gives us more detail. So what happens when we use a fillet radius? We have to use a narrow bearing. Because this area is increased, it narrows the bearing. You have to use a narrow bearing on mains and rods. And you have to use chamfered rods. If you examine a chamfered rod, one side is chamfered more than the other. The larger chamfer goes against this radius here. The thinner one goes in the center, but the larger one goes right in this area here. Narrow mains and rod bearings, chamfered rods, and adequate side clearance. I make mine and they were 21 thou. It's been so long since I had sex. I forgot who gets tied up.